Hello, my name is Mrs. Travis Keene. I'm an educator at the Baltimore Museum of Industry, and I host a program every Tuesday called We Workers, and we learn something new every week. I have a little friend who's going to help me today. His name is Chicken Teague, and Chicken Teague used to be in my classroom when I taught first grade, didn't you, Chicken Teague? Yeah. Chicken Teague loves to read, yes. He doesn't talk, he doesn't make very much noise. But you like to sit and listen to stories too, don't you? And learn new things, yeah. Well, today we're going to talk about tugboats. Do you know what a tugboat is? You don't? You've never heard of that term before? Never, never, ever. Well, Chicken Teague, we have a tugboat right out in our harbor. Yeah, we do, and it's called the Baltimore. Very nice. A tugboat is a boat that pushes bigger boats, larger vessels around the harbor. It helps them navigate the, the waters, the the when they come in to load and unload. Today we're going to read a story called Little Toot. Want to, want to sit and listen? All right. <clears throat> it's called Little Toot by Hardy Gramke. Here's a picture of him. And that harbor looks similar to ours, doesn't it? Don't you think? See all the big buildings? At the foot of an old, old wharf lives the cutest, silliest little tugboat you ever saw. A very handsome tugboat with a brand new candy stick smokestack. Look at his smokestack there. His name was Little Toot, and his name he came by through no fault of his own. Blow hard as he would, the only sound that came out of his whistle was a gay, small, Toot toot. That's the only sound he could make. Toot toot. But what he couldn't create in sound, Little Toot made up for his smoke. From his chubby smoke stack, he could send up a volley of smoke balls that bubbled over his wake like balloons. Hence, when he got all steamed up, Little Toot used to feel very important. Can you see these balls of smoke? Look at that. So he doesn't make a lot of noise, but he can make balls of smoke. When the flag on his masthead would dance like the tail of a puppy when it was happy, and he flaunted his signals like a man of war. Look at these beautiful flags. Aren't this cool? Isn't that cool? Now the river where Little Toot lives is full of ships. They come from all ports all over the world, bringing crews who speak strange tongues and bring even stranger cargoes, hides from Buenos Aires, copa from South Seas, whale oil from the Antarctic, and the fragrant teas from the distant Asia. So there's always work for tugboats to do, either pushing ships into the docks to be unloaded, or else pulling them back into the stream and down the channel to the ocean to begin a new voyage. So there's a lot of work to do if you're a tugboat. So a tugboat's life is a busy, exciting one, and Little Toot was properly right in the middle of it. His father, Big Toot, is the biggest and fastest tugboat on the river. Why Big Toot can make more smoke and kick up more water than any two of the other boats put together. Look at his father, isn't he nice? As for Grandfather Toot, He's an old sea dog who breathes smoke and tells of his mighty deeds on the river. Look, there's an ocean liner. Isn't that pretty? Can you see it? You'd think that little Toot, belonging to such an important family, would have his mind on work. But no. Little Toot hated work. He saw no sense in pulling ships 50 times bigger than himself all the way down to the ocean, and he was scared of the wild seas that lay in wait outside the channel, beyond where the harbor empties into the ocean. You see that? Little Toot had no desire to be tossed around. He preferred the calm water of the river itself, where he could always find plenty of fun, like gliding, for example. Look at him, he likes to glide around the, river, the water. 
Tem. Or playing thread the needle around the piers. Or what was even fancier, cutting figure eights. Look at him, he's making a figure eight there. <laughs> Little toot like nothing better than to make a really fine figure eight. First, you throw your weight on one side, then on the other. And the result never failed to delight him, although his antics annoyed the hardworking tugboats awfully. See, some people didn't, weren't appreciative of his work. Oh, look at him there. Can you see that eight? See that no, no, letter eight? But he kept on making figure eight that grew bigger and bigger until one day, carried away by the joy of it all, he made one so big it took up the whole river. Indeed, there was hardly room for it between the two shores. Look at that. An enormous eight. Hmm? And no room at all for the big tug named J.G. McGillicuddy, which was bound downstream to pick up a string of coal barges from Hoboken. J.G. McGillicuddy had little love for other tugboats anyway, and a frivolous one like Little Toot made him mad as witness. Look at he's not a happy, he's not happy at Little, little Toot. This by itself was bad enough, but unfortunately for Little Toot, the other tugboats had seen what had happened, so they began to make fun of him, calling him a sissy who only knew how to play. Poor Little Toot. He was ashamed and angry, but there was almost nothing he could do about it except to blow those silly smoke balls. Look at him, he feels so bad. But the more he blew, the more the other boats laughed at him. Little Toot couldn't stand it. He fled to his favorite hiding place alongside the wharf where his taunting friends could not reach him. And there he sat and sulked. Not happy, is he? Do you think he looks like he's happy? Look at his face. I think he's not pleased. After he had moped a while, Little Toot saw, headed down the river, a great ocean liner. Boy, look at this ship. Isn't this beautiful? And pulling it were four tugboats with his own father, Big Toot, right up front. Look at this. Here they go. Boy, they're pulling that ship, guiding him down, piloting them down. The sight of that brave, bustling work made Little Toot think. He thought harder than he had ever in his life, and then all of a sudden a great idea burst over him. He wouldn't be silly and frivolous, a frivolous little tugboat anymore. He would work like the best of them. After all, wasn't he the son of Big Toot and the, mighty, the mightiest on the river? Well, he could make Big Toot proud of him. He'd show them all, full of ambition, he started eagerly downstream. So look at him, he said, I can do this. Everybody in my family does this, I'm good. He sailed hopefully up to a big one big ship after another, tooting at them to heave a tow line. But they supposed he was still only a nuisance and would have nothing to do with him. Oscar, the Scandinavian, rudely blew steam in his face, look at this. They blew steam right in Little Toot's face, for heaven's sakes. And the others were too busy with their own affairs to notice a bothersome little tug. They knew him too well. They're all going about their way. They're like, oh, he's just being silly. We have work to do. <clears throat> but the rudest of all was a great transatlantic liner that blasted him right out of the water. Good heavens, how would you like that? That wouldn't be very good, would it? That was too much for Little Toot. He wasn't wanted anywhere by anyone. With his spirits drooping, he let the tide carry him where it willed. He was so lonesome. Look at his sad little face. Floating aimlessly downstream, he grew sadder and sadder until he was utterly miserable. Can you see the tears? See the tears on his little face? <clears throat> he had sunk so deep in his own despair that he didn't notice that the sky had grown dark and the wind was whipping up into a real storm. Suddenly he heard a sound that 
was like no other sound he'd heard before. It was the ocean, the great ocean that Little Toot had never seen, and the noise came from the waves as they dashed and pounded against the rocks. But that wasn't all. Against the black sky climbed a brilliant flaming rocket. When Little Toot looked hard, he saw jammed between two huge rocks an ocean liner, which his father had towed many times up and down the river. Oh my gosh, there's a ship way out there. Can you see it? Way out there, oh my goodness. It was truly a terrible thing to see. Little Toot went wild with excitement. He began puffing those silly balls of smoke out of his smokestack. He's thinking, oh my goodness, now what, now what, now what? And as he did, a wonderful thought struck him. <gasps> Why, those smoke balls could possibly be seen way up the river where his father and grandfather were. So he puffed a signal thus. And you know what he did? He puffed a signal that says, S-O-S. That means help. Can you see him? S-O-S. -S. Way up the river they saw it. Of course, they had no idea who was making the signals, but they knew it meant come quickly. So they all dropped what they were doing to race to the rescue. Look at them all, they're all coming. Can you see the picture? They're all coming quickly. They know that means somebody is in trouble and needs help. Out from many wharfs steamed a great fleet, big boats, little boats, fat boats, skinny boats. Look at them all, they're just coming in the nick of time. With Big Toot himself right in the head, like an admiral at the head of a fleet. Just in time, too, because Little Toot, still puffing out his SOS, was hard put to stay afloat. Remember, there's a storm, and so he's getting tossed up and down, up and down, out in the, in the ocean. One wave spun him around till he was dizzy. Another tossed him up so high, he was glad when a spiral-shaped wave came along for him to glide down on. Look at him, he's getting tossed up and down, tossed up and down. My goodness, that must be frightening. And before he could spit the salt water out of his smokestack, still another wave came along and tossed him up again. It looked as though he'd never get down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? All this was pretty awful for a tugboat that was used to the smooth water of the river. What made it terrifying was the fact that out of the corner of his eye, he saw was another huge wave. Little Tug saw that the fleet wasn't able to make headway against such fierce seas. Grandfather Toot was bellowing. He had never seen such a storm. Little Toot was scared green. Look at this. This is scary. Lots of water, lots of waves being tossed around. <clears throat> Something had to be done, but all that Little Toot had ever learned to do was blow out those silly smoke balls. That's all he thinks he can do. You think he can do more? I bet he can. <clears throat> Where he was, the channel was like a narrow bottle neck with the whole ocean trying to pour in at once. That was why the fleet couldn't make any headway, and the force of the sea simply swept them back. See, what's happening is, here they are, they're coming, the harbor, they're trying to come out into the ocean, but the force of the storm is pushing them back, pushing them back. Can we see that? Indeed, they were on the verge of giving up entirely, when suddenly, above the storm, they heard a gay, familiar toot. Can you see our friend? There he is. It was Little Toot. 
not wasting his strength, butting the waves as they had done, but bouncing from crest to crest like a rubber ball. The pounding hurt like everything, but little Toot kept right on going. And when Big Toot looked out to see through his binoculars, he saw the crew of the great vessel throwing a line to little Toot. Can you see that? Here's little Toot, and they're throwing him a line from the, from the vessel. It was a wonderful thing to see. When the line was made fast, Little Toot waited for a long time, a uh, moment, and when a huge wave swept under the liner, lifting it clear of the rocks, he pulled with all his might. The liner came free. Look at that, see that ocean liner? It's coming free. Boy, he got that in the nick of time. Wasn't he clever? What a clever little guy. The people on board began to cheer and the whole tugboat fleet insisted upon Little Toots escorting the great boat back into the harbor. Look at, there he goes. He gets to be the head of the line. Do you see him right there on the edge? Little Toot with all the other ones behind him. Little Toot was a hero, and Grandfather Toot blasted the news all over the river. I bet his grandpa was proud of him too, right? And his dad. They're telling everybody what a good job he did. Well, after that, little Toot became quite a different fellow. He even changed his tune. Can you see him? Does he look happy? He looks very happy, doesn't he? And it's said that he can haul as big a load as his father can. Do you think he can? As big a load as his father can. And that is when, that is when Big Toot hasn't a very big load to haul. Look at that. His father's pulling all those boats. <clears throat> and this is the end. The story about our little tugboat little too. Thank you for sharing this with us today. I hope you will come and visit us at We Workers every week. Uh, if you go to the website, you will see that there is a craft as well to participate in, and we'll give you a link to a song that you can sing. It's called Sailing, Sailing. Have a good day, and I hope to see you again. Bye.